for everybody tuning in today. As we begin today's show, I'd like you, I'd like to invite you to just take a moment to pause, just to breathe it in a little bit, just to arrive where we are at this point in time, where you are at this point in time, and the fact that we get to spend this time together. You know, the other day I sent out a post to our One Idea Way community, and I asked them to do just this, to take a pause, to get present to whatever it was that was going on for them at that moment in time, and to see what they were grateful for at that specific time. And it was amazing to me because we received so many replies, just kind of kept flooding in throughout the day. And we certainly got to see the world through our community's eyes and through our members' eyes. And there were really wonderful things that they were commenting on. But if I looked behind the, the sentiment, the feeling that was behind so many of those replies, people were just grateful to take the time to get present, to take the moment and actually pause and appreciate what was around them at that moment in time. We're so busy and caught up and swirling with all the different activities and responsibilities that we have that that moment of pause is something that we don't always take time for. And yet when we do, to me, these are moments, at least for speaking for myself, my own personal experience, this is when I really truly feel centered. You see, when I'm centered, when I'm coming from that place that's within me, I feel like I'm much calmer, I'm much more present, I'm much more aware, I'm much more mindful of the, the different things that are unfolding. And it's from that place within me that I'm able to reach out and meet life where it is and how it's unfolding. And for me, it's just been a fundamental difference in the way that I get to experience life. I will also tell you, I am becoming more and more of aware of the times that I am absolutely not in that centered place. Uh, and it does not happen all of the time. I get taken out of it, certainly. Uh, and I appreciate those times as well. Uh, although I can say that now, I didn't all, used to always be able to say that. And so today, we're going to talk a little bit about what, you know, what does it take for us to get back to that centered place? Because I think it brings two very interesting things together. It brings this deeper, more fulfilling, connected, even spiritual life that people seem to be leaning towards for, for that greater fulfillment, for that greater meaning. And how do we marry it with our day-to-day -day lives, with our day-to-day -day responsibilities and performance and work and relationships and all the things that are unfolding for us and at times can take us out of center. And so we're going to explore that today, and we get to explore that with just a, a really, truly an extraordinary individual within this field. We're joined today by Mark Lesser. Now, if you're not familiar with Mark's name, I hope some of you already are, but if you're not, Mark had the really good fortune of, of being involved in the development. He was a co-founder and then the CEO of the Search Inside Yourself Institute that developed within Google. And while that was a, you know, an extraordinary, extraordinary moment in time and experience that, that I know Mark will share a little bit from uh, today, he's done so much more than that. His journey is so much broader, and, and he's been involved in so many other entrepreneurial endeavors as well, uh, and also the study of mindfulness for quite some time. So officially, let me, let me introduce Mark Lesser. He's a speaker, facilitator, workshop leader, as well as an executive coach. Uh, he's also an author. He's known for his engaging and experiential presentations that integrate mindfulness and, mind, and emotional intelligence practices. He's the author of four books, including the most recent, Seven Practices of a Mindful Leader, Lessons from Google. And in addition to having been the co-founder as well as CEO of the Search Inside Yourself Institute, uh, featuring that mindfulness program that he developed within Google, Mark has founded and was the CEO of three other companies. He has his MBA from uh, New York University from Stern Business. Prior to his business and coaching career, he was also a resident at the San Francisco Zen Center for 10 years, and then later the director of the Tassajara Zen Mountain Center, the first Zen monastery in the Western world. So Mark's got a breadth of experience on this topic to bring to us today. And with that, Mark, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on One Idea Way. <laughs> thank you, Luke. It's really uh, great to be here with you. Thank you. You know, because of the breadth of your work, it does give me the chance to go online, not just read your books, but go online and see some of the things that you've done and spoken about. And one of the stories that, that I heard you share that kind of jumped out at me was you were walking into a retreat and you were kind of a, a, a guest facilitator right in the middle of the retreat. And as you walked in, they had actually just fired the facilitator of the retreat that, that you had walked into. And so things are kind of like in this melee of you walking into things. 
and you recentered the room by having them chat on three questions. Mm -hmm. And those questions were, why, why are you here on this planet? Mm -hmm. How's it going? And based on the answer to those two, what actions might you want to take? Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I'll spare you the third one for now. <laughs> but I am curious, actually, to toss those two questions to, to you right now of, so why are you here on this planet? And how's it going? I know that um, I, I I'm still I'm still reliving that moment. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was you know so cla it was so classic. You know, yeah. I, I, you know being being pulled aside and said you know welcome welcome to this retreat. Uh, we just fired the last facilitator. Welcome, and it's <laughs> it's, really going to, it's really going terribly. Um, well, y you know it's um uh, yeah. You know, in, um, in in the Zen tradition, there's a famous uh, there's a famous story of where uh, uh, it's actually the um, the founding story of of Zen Buddhism uh, mm. from about the um, fifth century or sixth century in China. This fellow named Bodhidharma, who uh, uh, who kind of is often pictured as a little bit wild, a little bit wild presence, uh, often has a big beard and an earring. And he's, uh, he's called into the emperor of China's home. Mm. Uh, emperor of China heard about this guy and wanted to meet him. And, and, uh, and his, um, he, he, he says, his, he, has, he has this question for Bodhidharma. It's like, tell me, what is, you know, what is the meaning of Zen, what is the meaning of life? How can I be a full human being? And and Bodhidharma looks at him and says, um, uh, "Emptiness. There's nothing, nothing holy. There's nothing holy." And um, the 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 uh, the emperor is completely baffled by this and put off by this. And then the emperor looks at Bodhidharma in the eyes and says, "Who who are you? Who who is it that's before me?" And and Bodhidharma famously <laughs> says. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the, this is the, uh, the, the kind of founding, uh, founding story of, um, of Zen. So in answer, it's, it's like, it's, yeah. makes it, it makes it hard for me to answer these questions. Uh, Cause yeah. on the one hand, you know, these are, um, these are big questions that I think are both uh, not meant to have answers. They're meant to, they're meant to uh, take you, they're meant to make you pause. They're meant to make you stop and pause, as you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And even, even just asking the question, like, mm -hmm. why am I here on the planet? Why am I here? Why am I here? Like, um, uh, there's something profound about stopping and, and asking, uh, asking that question. Yeah. I mean, I can give you some, I can give you some, uh, some, some answers which feel, um, you know, partial and tentative, but also are important. You know, I think it's great. Like that's, that's what we've got, you know, these partial tentative answers in, in this moment. And, you know, I'd say that um, um, uh, I'm here to, um, like, I think all of us, I think I'm here to find my own real freedom. I'm here mm -hmm. to find what, what my, you know, there's a, there's a, a beautiful line from a David White poem. Uh, David White, the poet and author, says, uh, you, you must learn one thing. And he, and he describes, as he's writing those words in this, uh, in, as he's writing this poem, he, he doesn't know, he, you know, and what, what comes to him is, uh, the world was made to be free in. You must learn one thing. The world was made to be free in. So I think, um, I, I think I'm here to find my own freedom, and I think I'm here to uh, to help others find what, what what real what real freedom is, for the sake I think for the sake of uh, healing ourselves and healing this planet of of, of ours. Um, and and answer to the second question: How's it going? God, there's so much to do. You know, I. Um, uh, I was just listening uh, this morning to a beautiful talk by uh, David Attenborough mm. uh, about um, how we are destroying this planet, how we humans are. Uh, he gave his great um, uh, kind of setting, setting up this context about um, 
evolution and how how we we have evolved as nature and how we are now um, kind of in in relationship with nature in a way that we have power that that humans have never had before. Yeah. So, how are we doing? There's a lot to do. I feel like there's so much there's so much work to do. And but I love you know I love the my the opportunities that I have to. I find myself um, in front of Google engineers. And I find myself uh, speaking at conferences and uh, working one on one with people running companies, and I feel great um, honor in in the places that I get to um, be influenced by and have influence in and um, and in terms of the third question, you know what actions um, I feel like you know it's like i I want to pract I want to deepen my own practice. I want to keep deepening deepening my practice. So yeah. thank you for those questions. It's, um, you know, it's, it, I, I don't want to take us off to an aside, but, but just because you brought up the, the, the one aspect of nature, uh, just for a second. It's interesting to me that we have somehow removed ourselves from nature mm -hmm. as if we're somehow not part of it, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're part of the natural phenomenon of whatever this is, whatever this universe is, and whatever the life is on this planet. Mm -hmm. We're part of that. And so we, we uh, it's just interesting to me that, that part of that perspective and perhaps part of the reason why we, we don't, um, we've had such struggle uh, caring for the planet uh, the way that we certainly can be yeah. uh, is because we somehow have separated ourselves from the very fact that we are of this planet. <laughs> We're part of it. Well, well, even, you know, this is, uh, even hearing you say that, uh, you, you get to, we get to experience that our language is dualistic, yeah. You know, yeah. Even saying I'm part of it separate, yeah. separates separates <laughs> yeah. us from it. It's right. a bizarre way, right? So, yeah. uh, so I think, um, but you're, yeah. but you're pointing right at I think the, um, you know, this topic that you mentioned early on about yeah. wanting, wanting to talk about these uh, this tension between, you know, yeah. one's um, uh, one's spiritual life or. Mm -hmm. or meaning and purpose and 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 these questions and it's interesting that um you know the the context of these questions that you raised um was uh it was a a, a three-day retreat of ceos who were creating a um a, a strategic plan for for an mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. and um and they were caught they got caught by their need to achieve and come up with this plan. And they were struggling and not connecting and going around in circles and they fired their facilitator. Yeah. And, and they hadn't taken the step of connecting, dropping down into their own hearts and into how they were more truly connected. And, so, that, and, that, and that entering and asking those questions provided a, a, uh, a context and a place where they could then yeah. do that strategic thinking. So it's, it's funny that all these, these, uh, these arcs, these arcs that are, I think, are part of the human condition between, uh, you know, our hearts and our minds and uh, pausing and activity and uh, uh, getting things done and letting go of being attached to getting things done both. So, yeah. Well, it's interesting because you, you use the phrase of, of real freedom, right? And, and that that's so much of your own work, your own personal journey and personal practice is for you to be able to step more and more and experience that real freedom uh, and being able to, to support others in that journey towards. And that seems like the, it's the draw, there's this freedom that we feel when we, we believe that we're connected to this deeper meaning, this deeper connection, whatever term we want to use for it, spirituality or otherwise. And we feel like, how is it that we can do that, experience that, be in the moment and be in the now and fully present and all these different things that we talk about. And then we've got goals that need to be hit, bills that need to be paid, uh, performance that, that, you know, that we've got to show up and be able to deliver. And I guess I'm curious, maybe even just from your own experience, your own journey of how, 
how did you begin? Maybe if, if we were to take a slight step backwards of how did you begin this journey to, to wrestle with this idea of how do we marry the, the spiritual deeper connection side of who we are to the everyday? Yeah, I think, um, you know, you, you mentioned, uh, uh, my, my most recent book, The Seven Practices of a yeah. Mindful Leader. And the, the subtitle is uh, actually Lessons from Google and a Zen Monastery Kitchen. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, and again, in, in some way, uh, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm appreciating, you know, that we're, you and I are both, well, you're in New Jersey. I don't know if you grew up, yeah. you grew up in New Jersey. I did. I yeah. did. So we're both yeah. New Jersey boys. And I sometimes, yeah. like, how did, how did I end up? Uh, in California and, and, you know, finding myself um, working uh, and then later running a, a Zen monastery kitchen in, yeah. in, in the mountains, in, a, in this wilderness area in central California. Um, but it was, in, in, in some way, I, I, I kind of point to that experience as the first time that I really got it in my whole being, in my body. Um, working in a high pressured kitchen you know mm-hmm. it was it was essentially a commercial kitchen we, this was cuz this zen monastery turns into a um, a conference center and a resort right in the summertime and there's um you know 70 or 80 overnight guests it has this reputation for mm-hmm. uh, gourmet vegetarian food so there's like like results matter real, yeah mm-hmm. real, real demand and and you know there you are in a kitchen everyone holding knives and, 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 and fires are flaming and you're cooking food and, and, and there's this very, uh, lots of energy and lots of stress and, and, but it was in an environment where we were all, the, the priority was practicing mindfulness. Mm-hmm. The priority was cultivating character. We were, we knew we were all there I wasn't there to be a cook. That was not my, 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 my aspiration wasn't to be a cook. Uh, it was to find freedom okay. and to build character, my own, and, and, to, and to support this building of character and freedom with the people around me. And, and chopping carrots and, and creating beautiful food and feeding people was a, uh, you know, a, way, a way to do that. Um, and, uh, and, and it was, there's something about that, that actual felt experience of, Mm -hmm. of that contrast, that tension, that arc around, um, that results matter. And yet, uh, the real results were about the connection and people. And, and, and there was, there was great joy in the work. Yeah. Even even when things you know things went wrong and, and there were there were amazing moments you know yeah. uh, you know potatoes not being cooked when it was time to serve up and and or you know um, someone was sick and and um, the the person who was supposed to make dinner yeah. uh, that night didn't show up and yeah. okay let's figure it out and but it was in the context it was in this context of uh, connection joy. You know, there's a um, uh, there's a great teaching in the Zen kitchen that, that from back, uh, actually, this is from um, th- the founder of uh, Zen in Japan wrote this wrote this treatise treatise called Instructions to the Head Cook. So mm. you know, people often think that that this idea of bringing mindfulness and spirituality and integrating with work is some new idea. Well, it was um, 800 years ago. In, <laughs> in which this, this fellow Dogen said, you should, mm-hmm. you should work in the kitchen with three minds, uh, joyful mind, grandmother mind, and wise mind. Yeah. And that, and that uh, these, these were often talked about and brought up and we would, we would stop in the middle of a busy, you know, yeah. in a busy day in the kitchen and, and remind ourselves like, oh, we're here to cultivate these three minds. Yeah. Let's actually go into that for a moment, because what before you went there, and it's interesting that, that that's just how how well you connected it. Because where my head was going was when you mentioned initially connection and joy, is that when we're able to 
enter into and, and the felt experience of being in joy, being in connection, mm -hmm. that from that state, from that being in the, the moments of those types of qualities being present, there's so much that emerges from that. Mm -hmm. And so the, the results and the performance seem to flow out of those types of states. Mm -hmm. Even if things aren't going perfect, we don't feel constrained by the things that aren't going well mm -hmm. because we meet them completely differently when we are mm -hmm. ingraining and bringing up within ourselves these types of qualities. And then you very specifically talk about a joyful mind, grandmother mind, and wise mind. And so maybe if you could connect some of this for us, because it sounds like those minds, which are, as I know from, from mindful study and contemplative study, it's not just the mind, it's what that creates in the full state that, that is created by it, of how that maybe does connect us to this deeper state that also allows us to be and show up the way that we may need to in any given moment. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, th those, uh, those, those three minds, uh, I think of as, um, you know, and this whole realm of, of mindfulness and this whole realm of spirituality, uh, they are things that we need to practice, yeah. right? That, that we, we actually need to, um, you know, so it's, uh, it's noticing, you know, and, and over again, I think it's noticing when we're tight, noticing, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'm tight, I'm, I'm um, you know, I'm running, I'm running some kind of, um, self-criticism i'm checking myself and it's like oh okay uh noticing that and and letting it go and opening opening myself up to um you know uh yeah what what, what am i what am i appreciating about this 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 moment mm -hmm. uh, you know even um uh just noticing uh, i'm breathing <laughs> i'm i'm alive uh and and then looking looking for uh, those connections, those solutions, um, and again, it's not—it's not at all about you know uh, putting on rose-colored glasses. It, mm -hmm. Not in any way. It's like completely, mm -hmm. completely noticing when I've lost it. You know, when uh, when I'm when I'm when I am feeling uh, stressed or, or 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 when I'm not showing up. I mean, even um, you know, I, I had one of those moments. You know, I um, I, I lead a. Uh, I lead a Wednesday night meditation group here in, in Mill Valley. And, uh, and last Wednesday, uh, you know, I'd had, a, I'd had a really busy day and, and uh, I, I went to um, uh, my Wednesday night group and I was surprised um, many more people showed up than usual. Mm. And, and I noticed like, oh, now I have to perform. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not so prepared. Why didn't I prepare? Right. And, and, and I noticed, I was like, oh, that's, those are interesting. Those are interesting thoughts, Lesser. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just, just show up, just trust myself, just, just, mm -hmm. um, just be in connection with who's here and, mm -hmm. and, and let's see what happens. And, uh, and it actually, um, you know, again, it would have it wouldn't have been bad that I had been uh, more prepared. I'm not saying it's not you know like like yeah. it's like oh note um, I should spend more time preparing for for this because you never know what's going to happen and and uh, and here I am I'm as prepared as I'm going to be yeah. I'm prepared from my whole life right now <laughs> like yeah. and and actually it um, in some way uh, uh, it turned out it turned out quite quite well there were some really uh, special and um, surprising things that happened in those moments. So to me, part of what, what you're exhibiting is, is some of the distinctions actually of those three minds. So I was wondering if we could actually just walk through those uh, to make those distinctions of, of you know, what, what is the wise mind, the grandmother mind, the joyful mind, because they do, uh, they, they do present to us uh, yeah. different perspectives, different lenses for us to be able to understand what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think all of them, um, like starting with joyful mind, um, again, I, 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 I've one of my favorite quotes that I, I often refer, lean back on Wendell Berry, you know, uh, be joyful though you've considered all the facts. Um, <laughs> so it's like, it's somehow, it's somehow completely, you know, maybe even, even in the midst of, 
stress and disappointment and loss and grief and politics and like it's not that you're not real but mm -hmm. even with what's happening um can you practice can you find a way to practice joy can you find a way to, to a kind of um bring it forward yeah yeah a kind of appreciation of of what's happening mm -hmm. um and and then what i love about I, i'm so surprised you know that this this dogen fellow from the 13th century who he seems kind of stern mostly in his teaching, mm. but that he brings up, you know, uh, uh, again, this is a translation, you know, grandmother mind or parental mind, but it's the right. mind, it's the mind of love. It's yeah. the mind of unconditional love. And I think it's great, you know, that this, this L word is showing up more and more in the business world. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, um, I, and, and I think, um, even going back to what we were referencing earlier about, you know, nature and, and one, there's something about the more we are um, at one with our bodies and minds, I think there's a, there's a tremendous, I think, wisdom in our bodies. I mean, again, it's, it's a good thing that we're, we're not in charge of all of the processes happening in our bodies, the wisdom happening. Uh, but, but the more I think we can be joyful and mm -hmm. loving, uh, and 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 what and wise, you know, and wise mind, I think is, um, you know, wisdom in part, I think is uh, seeing how short our lives are. Mm -hmm. You know, the wisdom, the wisdom of feeling um, kind of uh, impermanence, mm -hmm. and, and also I think that um, what we usually think of as our the, the story we tell about self is mm -hmm. usually a limiting, a limiting story in, in some way. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think wisdom in part is um, opening that aperture and seeing that uh, who, who, again, it's, I, and I think this is the teaching that I referred to early on uh, from Bodhidharma when mm -hmm. asked, you know, who, who are you? And he says, I don't know. Yeah. He's saying, I, I'm, um, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, I don't want to limit in this moment. I, I choose not to limit my story about who I am. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm, there's something vast about this human, yeah. human body and, and mind. Yeah. You know, I think with, with these, with these different minds, let's, you know, using, using that as just part of the kind of the frame of how we're navigating through some of this conversation. I think it's interesting that, it gives us different perspectives as to what's unfolding in any given moment. And I want to bring in something else that I know was an element of, of your latest book. Um, in the way in which you talk about connecting to our pain, as well as connecting to the pain of others. And the reason why I want to bring this up for a moment is that to me, there's something about us recognizing you use noticing and awareness of when we get tight, when we're stressed, when we feel the tension creeping in as an example there's something that's very interesting about us meeting the tension that is created within life, which another way of calling that tension would be pain and being able to be there in those moments that is both very deep and connecting to us. It allows us to understand and be freer of the things that we feel are creating tension and maybe understand ourselves more. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, when we run away from those moments, we're actually running away from the very things that we may need to see or experience for us to get to a different form of result or performance or whatever it is that has the tangible and even pragmatic value, uh, even though it's actually a very deep connected process to go through to get to that. And so I'm just curious if you could share a bit of your perspective of, you know, when you talk about connecting to your pain and connecting to the pain of others, yeah. you know, what you mean by that and how is that, you know, relevant to, to what we're talking about here today? Yeah, I think, uh, I, I, I think I want to kind of bring this to a, a, a particular kind of pain, which I think Please. is, uh, which I think is right in the framework of what, of what we're talking about here. Mm. And it's the, um, it's the pain of it's the pain of noticing the gap between kind of maybe where you are and where you want to be and and again this is you know this is i think one of the core uh elements of the coaching world or right. the 
or the business world or yeah. the human world. <laughs> um, you know, in any um, in, in any business, you know, you have your uh, your projections, your you know right. your financial projections, your product projections, mm -hmm. uh, the team you want to build, all these things that you want to be moving toward. You also may have your own um, kind of personal growth areas, right? So I I I want to um, I want to be more direct. I want to be more courageous. I I want to avoid difficulty less. So it's this, uh, it's painful. There's some pain yeah. in noticing the gap between here's what's real, here's where I am right now, and yeah. here is where I aspire to be or project to be or want to be. And um, um, it's actually one of my uh, favorite lines. There's a, there's a book, uh, it's funny, these, it's one of these books that in my mind is still quite relevant. Uh, Peter Senge wrote a book called The Fifth Discipline. Yeah. And he has a line in there saying, um, uh, the ability to stay with the discomfort of in those gaps between what is and yeah. what and where you want to be is perhaps the most important quality of a, of a leader. Yeah. And, and I would say maybe most one of the most important qualities of a human. Yeah. It's not just about leadership. It's right. it's uh, in all our relationships. Uh, so it's, it's having the courage, I think, to feel the pain and discomfort of, um, you know, the, the gaps, the mm -hmm. imperfections, the, boy, it's certainly, you know, like, our, it's uncomfortable. If you're anyone who's paying attention to politics right now, it's got to be uncomfortable. Like, how do we, how can we move from where we are to something with a bit more sanity, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's true of all of the systems that we've created from the food systems to the energy mm -hmm. systems, like, mm -hmm. like how, you know, and then there's more on the very personal level, like, you know, um, my relationship with my, my work life, you know, uh, my relationship with my children, with my spouse, uh, mm -hmm. there's everywhere I look, it's imperfect. And, mm -hmm. and there's all these, gaps and to to stay with uh to stay with that pain and discomfort of of what is you know that that's an interesting proposition at least this is what i'm connecting in my head i i don't want to put words in your mouth as to how you're positioning this but what started the form in my head of of this this marriage that we're talking about of the the deeply connected spiritual journey that, that, that many of us uh, are, are bringing into our lives, and I hear more and more of that or the desire for that on a day-in and day-out basis, and bringing that into our everyday lives, the responsibilities, the challenges, the stresses, the obligations, all those types of things. The way that you put that, and you brought up Peter Senge, and, and for me, what also that connected me to um, some of the work of Pema Chodron uh, and some of her talks is the power to stay within those moments, to stay within that discomfort, to be able to stay within whatever is swirling and going on at any given time takes a lot of practice. Uh, it takes a, a tremendous amount of presence in those moments, but it's almost as if aspects of our own spiritual practice, our own personal practices are about giving us the strength mm -hmm. to be there in those moments and to be there in a way that is not reactive, that is not judgmental, that incorporates the, the, you know, the joyful and the grandmother and the, the, the wise mind, as it were, because then we're able to meet those moments entirely differently than if we're caught up in the narrative and the story and the stress of it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm just kind of curious of, of when you think about that point, right, of how these, where these things start to connect, that to me is just one of those kind of, for me, an, an obvious point that's starting to stand out. Um, yeah. And, and again, I think, uh, Again, my, my my bias or my um, what what I believe and my own experience is that um, it takes it, it takes having some kind of a practice. It actually takes you can't just um, you know it's one thing to say uh, you know uh, life is short, right? And 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 there and if you say life is short, therefore everything becomes more meaningful and more crystallized. But but. Um, it it there's an embodiment quality there's yeah. a practice quality and and even uh i think this is um why 
uh, meditation practice is yeah. so important. Uh, I, I'm I'm more and more a um, a proponent and encourage people to do longer term retreats. That that it's it's hard. It's hard mm-hmm. being a human being in this in this world, mm-hmm. and that um, we we need we need that that ability. I think to um, that time of stepping out yeah. on a, on a daily basis uh, of a regular practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be able to take longer time and and i think um uh yeah we we need that we need that kind of um processing i think so much yeah. of it is processing our own um our own stories and letting go letting go of our stories and and then yeah. you know and then there's the the daily how we integrate how we integrate that um, mm-hmm. You know, and again, it. Um, uh, I, I think of it as um, that we're all uh, we're all like athletes, you know. And um, I was just watching, you know. I'm 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 people. A lot of people don't know how much of a sports addict I am, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was just watching. I was just watching a little bit this morning of, um, you know, the Federer and Nadal playing playing tennis, and but you know, like we're just we're seeing them you know, in the heat of the moment, but behind there is thousands of hours of practice, you know, yeah. and both, you know, I'm sure they, they have their own meditation practices mm-hmm. and then they have yeah. their, you know, working, you know, again and again to refine their, their ability to respond in, in the, in the heat of the moment. And, um, and in some way, I think, you know, the business world, the work world, the um, relationship world are all, you know, if we can uh, have have enough perspective and enough of a of a place where we're stepping out of our lives, we can you it, it all it all then becomes places to to yeah. practice. Yeah, you know, I think that it, again, I I forget exactly who it was that that had shared this or stated this and shifted my thinking around it years ago. Uh, was just that thinking around you know the number of hours that we put in to take care of ourselves physically the number of hours that we put in for training ourselves on the job, uh, whatever it is that we seem to invest in, and yet how much time are we really truly spending in building the the mental strength of being able to be where we are, to be able to see more clearly, more objectively without this story, how much time are we really putting in to build that strength Mm -hmm. of being centered and present and connected with ourselves to be able to show up in life that way. Uh, and that's exactly what you're speaking to is that that is a practice. That's not something that we get to snap our fingers and have, uh, or otherwise it'd be, a, it'd be a whole lot easier. Um, but that's part of our journey. And that's, and I, maybe just a, a comment or two from you is to, I guess to me, that's part of us finding real freedom mm-hmm. is also coming up against the, the things that demonstrate how we are not yet free. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, again, these, you know, these are, uh, you, you have to be a fan of paradox to really enjoy these, um, these particular, and, and again, uh, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I try to, I, I, I try to find out where, where the expression, there's an expression, if it's not paradoxical, it's not true. <laughs> And when I look it up, it says Mark Lesser said that, which is totally not not helpful. <laughs> um, uh, but because um, I think uh, I I I I one hundred percent am agreeing with what you're saying, you know, mm. and and part of the practice is that you're free right now. You're free right now. Don't wait. Uh, even if you're bored, uncomfortable, stressed, uh, find find your freedom right now. Don't wait. There's no other, because none of us knows. You know, here in California, we think the ground is solid, but we're finding <laughs> out it's not. We, you know, it's done. and, um, yeah, like there is. That's that's. A, another beautiful aspect, I think, of this practice of freedom is um, uh, we have the opportunity to be free right now in this moment. Don't wait. 
you know, and, and, and so it's both, you know, it's a both end, right? There's, yeah. you know, there's, there's noticing the gaps and there's noticing uh, no gaps right now. Um, we are, we are as free as we're ever going to be. Mark, to, to wrap us up, I guess my last question then would be, how do you do that? Meaning how do you connect to that freedom in any given moment? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, um, uh, I, I aspire in my own, you know, my own daily practice is, um, you know, when I, uh, when I do my, my, my daily meditation practice is to, um, as I, as I exhale, um, the sense of uh, letting go of everything, just letting go of everything, whoever I think I am, my problems, I know, I know they'll be there with the next inhale. Um, and, and there they are with the next inhale. <laughs> and then uh, letting, it, letting it go. And 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 uh, and there's something about um, doing that practice with others, uh, doing that practice um, with with others, uh, is um, uh, profound. And and um, yeah, that's my that's yeah. that's my that's that's my life. That's my aspiration, you know. And it's um, um, going back and forth, you know, from um, uh, s spreadsheets and and marketing and numbers and and I'm you know um, I'm I'm amazed you know I just I, I just got back from a trip to Europe and I'm like wow jet engines like the 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 um, the incredible thinking and genius that went into mm -hmm. humans working together to build to build these things and technology it's an amazing it's an amazing thing and um, back to uh, letting go of everything with each breath and, and, and the living, living in these many, these many worlds. Yeah. Mark, I want to thank you for coming on One Idea Way, uh, for sharing your experience, sharing your perspective, sharing your energy with us, uh, and spending this time with our community. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. You know, for everybody, I guess what just came to mind based on what Mark was sharing is that when we think about in any given moment, whatever it is that might be pressing on us, ask yourself just for a moment of, if this weren't true, what would open up at this moment? If this wasn't here, what else would be? You may even want to consider that if I let go of this, what's now possible? So at any given moment, we have that opportunity. This is a way of moving towards that ability to really access freedom. And at times we may need to be able to take that pause and say, well, if we just let go of these things, what space gets created? What's now here? What am I now able to connect to? And when you connect into that state and you connect into what you begin to get present to at those times, whether it be appreciation or gratitude or love or, or some other state that really starts to enter at those moments, now you can look back at what's going on and say, now, how can I bring this to this situation or this experience or this moment in time and just see what begins to open up for you. But all of it begins exactly where we started our show today, which is learning more and more often to just simply take that pause and notice what's going on around you. From there, you can start to bring through who you truly are and experience and touch life completely differently. So as always, I want to thank you for dropping in on One Idea Away and until next time, continue to enjoy the journey. Thanks for being here. Check out IPEX Coach Training Program at ipexcoaching.com slash OIA. And of course, to find out about all the conversations, events, gatherings, all the things that we've got upcoming, then head on over to oneideaaway.com forward slash community. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please do us the favor of subscribing, reviewing the show, as well as sharing insights or comments that stood out for you in this episode.